For a good portion of our recent history, we've been sending lots of data via radio. The thing is, radio signal doesn't get shot from point A to point B. It gets sprayed all over the place, in hopes that the intended recipient notices. Every TV show, radio program, song, phone call, cat video, tweet, snap, text message. In other words, we make a lot of noise. It makes sense that any other intelligent life in the universe probably makes a lot of noise too. That was what John Krauss suggested in 1955 in an issue of Scientific American, looking for signs of intelligent life in the universe by looking for their radio signals. By 1957, Ohio State University had begun to build a radio observatory to look for these signals. The project would later be dubbed the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI, because apparently it's very difficult for anybody to come up with an acronym that makes any sense. SETI gained some publicity after the Ohio State SETI program found and published the WOW signal, dubbed such after one of the researchers noticed a promising splotch of numbers, circled them, and wrote WOW on the side. The origin of the signal was never found, and was never detected again. The SETI project has faced criticism from all sorts of people, including Stephen Hawking. Critics have asked important questions like, what if we find something hostile? Haven't you seen Independence Day? And most importantly, how do we analyze all of that data? With increasing numbers of telescopes reading an increasing amounts of data, the task of analyzing everything was rapidly becoming daunting. The Ohio State Telescope was only the first of many. UC Berkeley started building the 42 Telescope Allen Telescope Array in 2005, which today is one of the more notable sources of data for SETI. UC Berkeley also launched the Serendip program to use data from existing telescopes. Whenever a telescope in the Serenit program was in use, UC Berkeley would get a copy of the data for SETI. The SETI program certainly wasn't having any trouble getting data. It was a matter that it had too much. According to an APOD from 1999, it was at this point that SETI enthusiasts David Getty and Craig Kaznov had the idea to start a distributed computing project which they would come to endearingly title SETI at Home. But what is distributed computing? When your computer isn't doing anything, it runs something called an idle process, which essentially tells the processor to twiddle its digital thumbs until it has something to do. It's very similar to how your car's engine keeps spinning when you're stopped at the light. It isn't helping your car go anywhere, but it means you don't have to turn the ignition every time the light turns green. With the sheer number of computers in the world, there's always a lot of energy being wasted on thumb twiddling. The main idea of distributed computing is to put all of this wasted computing potential to good use by doing all of the things that no one computer could possibly handle by itself, such as analyzing data from SETI telescopes. It starts with the user putting a program on their computer, which runs at a slightly higher priority than the idle process. When the program is given processing time, it notifies a server which replies back with a tiny chunk of the data that needs to be analyzed. The program analyzes the data, reports back what it found, and the process repeats. SETI at home was a bit special. Instead of replacing the idle process, the program ran as a screensaver. This meant that the user could see basic information about the data they were analyzing, and it gave the program free advertising on public computers in schools and libraries. The SETI program's analysis starts by doing baseline smoothing, which chops up the data and throws out anything that encompasses too many frequencies, leaving only the narrow band signals that we would expect from intelligent life. It then proceeds to look for any continuous tones in the data, taking Doppler shift into account. After that, it looks for any pulsating tones in the data. Finally, it sends back whatever data it finds to the server in exchange for a new chunk of data. Sadly, having completely analyzed the entire sky three times over, the SETI at Home project hasn't found any conclusive data. However, Enrico Fermi suggested that the disconnect between our expectation for the universe to be teeming with life and the data we've actually found does not necessarily point to a flawed hypothesis. It might simply be that we're looking in the wrong places. We don't know for sure that an alien civilization would be broadcasting shorthand signals like we do, nor are we sure that they broadcast EM waves at frequencies we can pick up. The idea that they would be making as much noise as us might be misguided too. 
I would even say that it's entirely possible there's an alien civilization out there that decided to cease all radio communications so as not to draw attention to themselves, who, just like us, feared the possibility of finding something hostile. With no idea of what we're looking for, just because we haven't found anything, doesn't mean it isn't there. In 1961, Dr. Frank Drake described the probability of us establishing communication with an extraterrestrial species by summing up all of the requirements into the Drake Equation. His equation combines how often habitable planets form, the probability of life developing, whether they use radio, and how long it would take for us to receive a signal from them. We don't know the values of anything in the Drake Equation, it simply serves to inspire discussion. But even though we haven't found anything, SETI at Home is a well-known name in the world of distributed computing, because it helped to prove that distributed computing is a viable way to analyze staggering heaps of data, and plenty of other distributed computing projects have followed suit. Berkeley's Open Infrastructure for Network Computing, or BOINC, which they originally developed for use with SETI at Home, has since been applied to all sorts of other distributed computing projects, many of which are astronomy-related, such as modeling the entire Milky Way or searching for binary pairs of neutron stars. Although SETI at Home hasn't achieved its original purpose, I believe its contribution to the world of distributed computing deems it a massive success. It's unlikely any of those other distributed computing projects would exist if not for SETI at Home paving the way. Besides that, SETI at Home still has more to do. Even though it didn't find anything conclusive, it did find several areas of interest that we simply don't know enough about. Besides this, there's talk of having it analyze the cosmic white noise that it cut out too. It still has a promising future, because people involved with SETI are such strong optimists. And truly, at its core, that's what the SETI project's about, is hope. Hope that someday we might be able to find a friend in the universe, and cure our species' crippling loneliness.